Good morning. Today's Thursday, the 2nd of February, and it's the feast of the presentation of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, 1 to 4. The Lord God says this, Look, I am going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me, and the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple, and the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for, yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire and the fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Then they will make the offering to the Lord as it should be made. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be welcomed by the Lord as in former days as in the years of old. The Word of the Lord. And the Gospel is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice, in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there is a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans, the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, You see this child? He is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected. And a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess there also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher, she was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God day and night with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything that the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favour was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's feast marks a turning point between growing up and uh, adult Jesus as he begins his ministry. And this feast signifies a point of turning. This first recognition that Jesus is there to be, the, not then at that moment, but later, the judge, the challenge for everybody to go with him or against him. So beginning with the prophecy of Malachi, it sounds very dire that the coming of the Lord will be a moment of great trauma, full as burning the dross off the gold or full as alkali, causing people to be severely challenged. 
It is a challenge, and Jesus all his life is a challenge. At this very point in the temple, he's not a challenge. But we'll see in the Gospel, even there, the question of challenge comes up. At the end of this prophecy of Malachi, there is the point of the offering in the temple, that the temple, the holy place of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, will be the place where God and man are reconciled. Man can turn back to God and with his free choice become a child of God. The Gospel is the wonderful story of Simeon and Anna who are in, come to the temple the day that Jesus is brought by his parents. They come down from Nazareth, it's probably two days journey, um, and they come to offer the two turtle doves or two pigeons that's expected when a child, um, a, a first male child is born. Simeon has been promised he will see the Messiah and he holds him in his arms and said, now Lord I can go and come back to you, I can die because I've seen the salvation of Israel. And his heart is full of joy. But he promises Mary, the very point that perhaps Malachi is pointing to, that a sword will pierce her heart. Um, she will find great, great sorrow because the very challenge that Jesus is going to bring about to the people of Israel is going to lead to his death, his suffering and death. I don't think Mary knows at the moment, at that time, exactly what it's all about. Um, I think what Mary and Joseph were struggling at each point. What on earth is going on? What happens next? And then there's comfort them, for them both when the old lady Anna, who's been a widow since the age of what? She's 85 now, was widowed when she was 25. So 60 years of prayer and fasting and leading the life of a widow. And she finds great joy and comfort and also forecasts that this is the salvation of Jerusalem. So the presentation is both joy, but also the intimation of challenge and struggle, which Jesus is. He brings both peace, he brings both freedom, but he also is, a, a like scripture, a two-edged sword. You are either for him or against him. You have to make up your mind and do something to follow him. And it's in that sense we turn to the Lord with our prayers to ask that we may renew our commitment. We're already committed by our baptism, but it's renewed now, like with Simeon. We can go in peace that we've seen what, what's going on. This is the salvation of the world. We turn to our bidding prayers. <clears throat> the response is, Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. We adore our Lord and Saviour, who was presented to his Father in the temple, and who came to bring comfort to his brothers. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. On the cross you consummated your sacrifice to the Father. Unite our offerings to yours in the sacrifice of your church. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. You brought consolation to Israel. Bring us now your wisdom, fresh understanding and new vision. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. The church continues to proclaim your coming. Through her, bring light to those who search for truth. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. You are the sign of contradiction, the cornerstone rejected by the builders. Build us as living stones into a temple where you will dwell. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty ever-living God, on this day your only begotten Son was presented in the temple, in flesh and blood like ours. Purify us in mind and heart, that we may meet you in your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you always. God bless all the best.